Hi guys, this is Geneva Style here. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who have not subscribed yet, make sure you do to see more Star Wars content in the future. Now, this will be a specific look at Raylo content in The Force Awakens. Let's get started. We as audience can learn more about the character's future from their first introductions. Most characters in the movie, particularly Finn, Kylo Ren and Rey, start off wearing a mask. Now the character of Poe is now wearing a mask because he has not changed a bit from the beginning to end. Instead, the other characters end up on places that we did not expect in the beginning. A mask is a form of facial disguise that was often used in ancient times to frighten the enemy and to conceal one's own identity. We can deduce from the novelization that Kylo Ren decided to wear a mask not only to follow the footsteps of his grandfather but especially to hide his true self. It did not want the galaxy to recognize his true identity as son of General Leia Organa. The mask represents a character's false face to present to the world. And also a mask allows the characters to perform acts that are completely out of their comfort zone, out of their characters. Um, specifically, Kylo Ren loses his menacing demeanor as soon as he removes that mask. He shows his vulnerability and his emotional conflict. Ray's mask, on the other hand, is a way to protect herself on the job and is a representation of how a scavenger would look like. However, as soon as she removes it, the music starts playing in the background and she immediately becomes someone else, someone important in the story. She's not what she seems. Even Kylo Ren says so. Is it true? Are you just a scavenger? He asks. Parallelism created in both introductions suggests a future connection between the two. And I must say that the two parallel storylines in films never remain parallel for too long. Just saying. We can thank J.J. Abrams for dropping this mystery box out of nowhere. The stormtroopers never mentioned a girl or there was no discussion of a girl in Jakku after discovering the droid's whereabouts. Kylo's abrupt reaction to the report on the droid's escape tells us he knew about this girl. We're not sure where or when he heard about her, but he knew she was powerful enough to jeopardize the mission. From that point on, I knew there was a connection between them. There's so much room to speculate, but at this point we cannot deny the climatic tension between these two characters perceiving their first meaning. In The Force Awakens, Han Solo, Finn and Rey visit Mos Kanata's castle hoping to reconnect with the Resistance and deliver the droid to them. While doing so, Rey is called by Anakin's and Luke's lightsaber secretly kept hidden, so she touches it and she's taken to an unknown place, the subconscious, involving traumatic memories and breaking points that characterize the lives of whoever became connected with that lightsaber through the Force. Now, how did the lightsaber call to Rey? She hears her screams as a child when she was abandoned by her parents. I always like to think about the lightsaber as Harry Potter's wand. The wand picks the wizard. We do not always know why. In Harry Potter's universe, the wand called to Harry due to his connection with Voldemort. What if the lightsaber called to Rey due to her connection with the Skywalkers and by extension Kylo Ren? But how? As soon as she touches it, she's transported into a different reality. Luke's memory while Tev fighting against Darth Vader in Cloud City. And you can clearly hear Vader's breathing, Luke's screams once Darth Vader is revealed to be his father, and Yoda's conversation with Luke prior to leaving to confront Vader in Empire Strikes Back. Then the environment collapses around her, and she's taken to Luke's mourning the death of his students and the destruction of his Jedi Academy. The scene transitions to Kylo Ren attacking an unknown figure accompanied by the Knights of Ren and Kylo Ren seems to notice her and walks towards her. Then a time jump occurs and she's transported to her childhood, the moment they attracted her to the lightsaber in the first place. She's screaming while her parents are leaving her on Jakku and their ship is directed towards a thin red light and that light transitions to the Starkiller base where she's running up against Kylo Ren in the forest. You can hear also Obi-Wan's voice saying, Ray, these are your first steps. These last two scenes, so the scene with her parents and the scene with Kylo in the forest, represent Ray's past and future. All the people that connected to her through the lightsaber, Darth Vader, Yoda, Luke, Kylo Ren, even Obi-Wan, the lightsaber belonged to Anakin, but was taken by Obi-Wan after Anakin turned to the dark side. Obi-Wan returned to Luke to fight against Darth Vader and lost it on Cloud City. After that, we do not know how the lightsaber was retrieved, but we do know the lightsaber was found and was given to Kylo Ren, who lost it during his fight at the Academy after betraying Luke. 
The scene where Ray confronts Kylo Ren in the rain, many people believe that to be a vision of the future, presumably occurring in episode 9. I personally do not believe so. That is a vision of the past. I'm quite certain that Luke Skywalker got rid of the lightsaber immediately after being betrayed by Kylo Ren. For some reason, that scene reminds me of Mustafar and Vader's castle it appears to be in the background. That is where Kylo Ren was retrieving Vader's relics, including Vader's mask. That is where he found the lightsaber. That is when I understood the whole point of this vision. Ray's Force vision is not just a mere recollection of memories and traumatic experiences, but also the lightsaber's experience of being found and lost. When the environment collapsed in Cloud City and Rey falls to the ground, that is a representation of the lightsaber's fall to the ground after Luke lost his hand. Rey represents the lightsaber in her own vision, so the clan leader, as they call it, killed by Kylo Ren was not trying to kill Rey. Rey was not physically present during that scene, he was trying to destroy the lightsaber, so Kylo Ren killed him for that. In fact, that scene in the rain, you can actually see Kylo Ren holding the lightsaber. Immediately after that, something sudden happens. Kylo Ren and Rey see each other. That is the key to understand the purpose of this scene. Rey was not there, but Kylo Ren had a vision of her by touching the lightsaber. Not sure what he actually saw, but he saw something. He saw his destiny. That is the reason why I believe he decided to leave that lightsaber behind due to his feelings of instability after seeing that girl. Kylo Ray's first official meeting on Takodana is full of weird tension and sexual tone. Kylo acts as if he knows Ray already. He has heard of this girl he never met, but like I said, I believe he had a vision of Ray by touching the Skywalker sable previously. Why is there a sexual tone? First of all, he checks her out. And then this. His lightsaber symbolizes masculinity and he's putting it right in front of her face. As he reads her mind, there's more to it. He's not just looking for the map. He realizes there's something there. He could have got the map right there. He did not have to capture her or spare her life. And of course, if you had a vision of someone that you thought might represent your destiny in the light, would you let her go? And if you think you might be facing your destiny, wouldn't you at least explore it a little bit more? That is exactly Kyle Ren's thought process at this time. I believe that this signifies how Kylo Ren has always planned to kill Snoke and become Supreme Leader with a companion. However, he was never sure how. Before being interrupted by the stormtroopers, he's very close to her, again searching for something. We're not sure what. After being interrupted, he reacts abruptly, almost being caught in an act that should not have happened. From that alone, you think he's hiding his true intent. Then the famous bridal carry. He literally carries the bride over the bridal threshold. This is an important symbol in Western culture. Some people suggested that it was simply a continuity device. It could not have done it otherwise. I do not really believe so. It could have asked the stormtroopers to carry her to his ship. Come on. The interrogation scene left me with more questions than answers. That is quite ironic. So the scene starts with Ray bound to an upright chair, and she wakes up and after looking around she notices Kylo Ren kneeling down watching her sleep. Now, that is already odd since Kylo Ren's position is not intimidating at all. If he wanted to intimidate her, he would have stood up, don't you think? But maybe he did not want to scare her, he wanted her to be comfortable. In fact, he immediately says, you're my guest, after a little laugh. She asks where the others were, and he responds, you will be relieved to hear, I have no idea. Certainly he does not want to appear strategic at all. He's actually telling her the truth, and why? Then he continues, you still want to kill me? Ray responds, that's what happens when you're being haunted by a creature in a mask. Immediately after, Kyle takes off his mask, staring at her. And that action can only mean he wanted to show her his humanity. In fact, she looks quite surprised. So many questions at this point. Why does he sound surprised about her wanting to kill him? I mean, that is quite normal in a state of war. And why does he take off his mask? Maybe because he wants her to feel more comfortable, so that she would not want to kill him. Well, Ray's not comfortable at all when he approaches her. He's young and handsome, everything that she did not expect. And suddenly, he started asking her about the droid. It's about time. This suggests to Kylo's internal conflict between his personal agenda, finding Luke and this girl, and following, following Snoke's orders, which he grew retrieving the droid. When he starts reading her mind, he says, You're so lonely, so afraid to leave. And in reality, he's talking about himself, whether he realizes it or not. He continues, 
a night desperate to sleep. You imagine an ocean. I see it. I see the island. Then he continues, shaking his head. And Han Solo, you feel like it's the father he never had. You w- he would have disappointed you. Dear Kylo, why are you looking into poor race, loneliness, and thoughts? What does that have to do with the map? Initially, he probably did it to show her his powers, ability to retrieve her deepest thoughts. So he, he basically was showing off. Let's admit that. Then he became more and more interested. She seems distraught and says, get out of my head. That is when she, he goes back to his normal self and he mentions the map. He says, don't be afraid, I feel it too. Okay, what does that mean? Is he really trying to make her feel better? That is what it seems. Then Ray says, you, you're afraid that you will never be as strong as Darth Vader. So Kylo disconnects immediately from her and he looks very scared and confused. And then he whispers, no. The lightsaber duel between Finn, Rey, and Kylo Ren marks the finale of The Force Awakens. The fight takes place on Starkiller Base and Finn is the first to fight Kylo with the Skywalker saber. Rey calls him a monster. Kylo responds, it's just us now. Han Solo can save you. Kylo is beating his fist against his injury on his side to fuel his pain and rage. And Kylo actually used his force powers to disarm Rey for a moment. Again, he's not trying to kill her. And by the way, she pointed the blaster at him first. He wants to take her, but he needs to get rid of Finn first. His father died and he's emotionally unstable at this time. At the end of their fight, he slashes Finn's back and for many of us, he's presumed dead. It's important to point out Kylo's sadistic expression hearing Finn screaming for the pain. And Kylo reaches out to retrieve the lightsaber stuck in the snow. He tries to grab it through the force, but he's unable to do it. There's a conflictive force power that's working against it. And all of the sun and the last saber flies directly to Rey's hand. This scene is reminiscent of the legend of the Excalibur and King Arthur, the true king. Rey is, at this time, the right person to handle the Skywalker legacy, not Kylo Ren. So Kylo Ren turns around and looks at her in disbelief. In the novelization, he also says, It is you. That is a point of realization for Kylo Ren. As stated previously, I believe he realizes it is the girl of his vision when he touched the lightsaber on Mustafar. He knows that she represents the reawakening of the Force. Her moves are very rusty, but she knows how to use the environment, the rocks and trees. During the first part of the fight, Rey is at a disadvantage due to her lack of experience as she tries to get away from Kylo. Kylo's approach is a little bit different. He wants to disable her by not kill or humiliate her the way he did with Finn. When they both reach the cliff, Rey is helpless due to a close fall. Then Kylo Ren offers to train her and teach her the ways of the Force. When he makes that offer, he's not following Snoke's orders, he's simply following his own desires. It would have been an agreement between the two of them. So he wants her for himself, and his vanity and arrogance are such that, that he believes she could actually contemplate that idea. What a fool. When Ray closes her eyes, she's reaching out to the Force. However, this back-to-back close-ups of their faces indicate that she's not doing it alone. They're both finding the Force together. It seems like she's drawing the Force out of him. In fact, the final act witnesses race, rage, and inclination for the dark. That parallelism is best represented when he grabs her saber and she grabs his. It becomes a contest of strength. Ray destroys the red light saber and Kylo Ren loses the fight. She did not have to scar him during the fight, but she wanted to, so that's what she did. She wanted to humiliate him the same way he did with Finn. So they're so different, but so similar at the same time. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. May the force be with you.